Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what's new in iPadOS 26.2. And just like in iPadOS 26.1, there's actually a big new feature, or a returning feature rather, that iPad users will appreciate. 26.2 features the return of drag and drop multitasking for split view and slide over, which has been sorely missed with the new multitasking and windowing system we got. But that, of course, is not the only thing that's new in this update. So let's go into the new features in 26.2. So of course, the biggest new feature in this update for iPad users is the return of drag and drop multitasking. Now, if you're newer to the iPad, you may not know this, but prior to iPad OS 26, the main way we got in and out of multitasking was through drag and drop, either dragging an app out of the dock or out of spotlight, and then creating a split view or putting an app into slide over. With iPad OS 26, Apple moved to a windowing system that, while more flexible, got rid of some of these really nice touch optimized affordances that we as iPad users were used to. We've seen, thankfully, that Apple is responding to our feedback. In iPad OS 26.1, they brought us a version of slide over, and now they're doing the same for the drag and drop gestures that we were used to before. So, for example, I'm in windowed apps mode. I've got my browser in full screen. If I pull up the dock here, and I grab, let's say, the music app. I can pull it over to the side and create a split view, more or less like we used to do before. Pretty nice. And say I have an app and slide over. Put that out here. Let's say I want to put, oh, messages into slide over. I can drag that over to the slide over window as well. And this should be able to work in both orientations too. So if I were to do this again. We'll do this in portrait. Again, we'll start from this. I'll grab the music app. Creates a split that way as well. Doesn't want to create a vertical split. That would be kind of cool, but uh, this is a little bit better than the default behavior we used to have where it was like two thirds of one app and one third of the other. This feels a little better here, 50-50 to me at least. And again, if I pull in my slide over app. I want to drag an app there. I can do that. And of course this works with spotlight as well if you're using a mouse and keyboard. So again, if I start from the full screen view, pull up spotlight, music app, drag this over to the side, create my split view. And podcasts already there. Let's pull in, uh, let's say, calculator. So again, this isn't quite as smooth as the system we had before. For example, in the old system, when I closed the second app, the remaining app would go full screen again. That doesn't happen here. I would have to either hit the maximize button or hit one of the tiling options. So depending on your workflow, that's either good or bad, but something to call out here. Again, I'm not pretending this is perfect, but the fact that Apple is making these moves to continually improve multitasking uh, for those of us who got used to the old system is really nice to see. So we have a few changes with Liquid Glass in this release, most noticeably on the lock screen. So let's go ahead and pull that down. We'll go into Customize. We'll tap on the clock. And you'll see we have a couple of new options here. What you can do here for the time itself, of course you could like you could before, you can make it thinner or thicker here, but you can also customize the glass effect if you prefer this glass option. So you can make it really, really glassy and transparent or make it more solid and easier to see. You have that range here, or you could just use one of the presets here. So it can go between glass and solid very easily to find the match you want. I'm gonna go a little crazy here. So I actually kind of like the effect. I'm going to make it more transparent, which I just think looks kind of cool. And we'll make it bigger, really for no reason. So the next thing you'll notice is in Notification Center here. And this is really small, but basically the buttons you have around managing notifications. So that would be the X here. If there was a Show More button, that would be here. Or if you tap and hold and do Clear All Notifications. All of these UI elements, uh, now have the liquid glass effect, so they're more transparent 
if you like that effect here. I'm just going to clear all here. Lastly is menus. If you're an app with a menu, you know, the menus now have that nice animation when you expand them. Um, that's just been improved in 26.2 to be just a little bouncier than it was before. Kind of see as I come in and out here. And I should have a comparison up on the screen so you can kind of see this, but a little bit more of a lively animation here. And that's what's noticeably new with Liquid Glass in this update. So as you're probably aware, the Apple Music app has had excellent lyric support for a few years now. And in 26.2, we get offline support. And we can see that. I'm going to turn on airplane mode here. And then we're going to go to the Music app. I have no connection here. And then I will pick an Apple Music song that I recently downloaded here. Now I'm going to play the audio so I don't get a strike. You can see the lyrics button at the bottom right corner is enabled. And just like when it's online, highlights the words as they are sung or spoken on the track itself. Apple Podcasts gets a few new features in 26.2 that are worth mentioning. First, we have automatic chapters, which means for individual podcast episodes that don't include chapter support, Apple Podcasts can try to automatically create chapters with tappable markers that will take you to that section of the episode. So I'm going to pick a random episode of this podcast here. Go into the episode page, and then let's start playing it. Pull that up, the now playing screen, and within a couple seconds here you see the chapters showed up on the right here. And you can of course tap between them and move between the different sections of the podcast. What we can also see here is a feature called From This Episode. This is the podcast app trying to surface links that are mentioned in that episode in a way that uh, is easily accessible and tappable. Like a tap on this link can get brought to whatever was mentioned in the podcast episode. And then lastly, there's also supposedly support for mentions. Uh, this is a feature I still haven't been able to figure out how to test yet, but Apple Podcasts should, in theory, recognize when another podcast is mentioned and provide a link to it on the same episode page. Big new feature with the Freeform app in this update would be support for tables which has a flexible layout and can be styled in different ways with different fill colors and border styles and whatnot. So let's start this from the top here. So I'm going to delete the one I already had here, show you what it's like to create a table. So in the toolbar here, there's now a table option. If you tap it, it automatically creates a table. And if you tap on the little table in the options bar here, you'll see it's really easy to increase the number of rows, adjust the number of columns, and you can turn off or on auto adjusting, auto growing cells. So another nice tool in the toolbox for the Freeform app, which if you're not using, it's actually really, really good. And it's definitely worth giving a shot. The games app also got some improvements in this update. Let's go into games here. And there's a few small new things here. There's a filter control for your library. You can now navigate the interface using a controller and you can track challenges scores right in the games app directly as well. I think those are all pretty well self-explanatory, but it's nice that Apple's continuing to iterate on the games app. I'm not a big gamer on Apple platforms. I kind of prefer either using Windows or the Nintendo Switch 2, which is amazing. Even though Apple quote unquote doesn't get games, I appreciate that they still try because I know gaming is important to a lot of people. So that's really all there is to talk about about iPadOS 26.2. Again, pretty happy we got the drag and drop multitasking back, and I hope Apple continues to prioritize the needs of those of us who use our iPads primarily with touch, and not just those using it as a laptop replacement. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you, I appreciate your time. As always, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. And with that, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.